All right, so I'm pretty excited about this knife. This is the newest version of the Mountain Man by Bark River. This one has um, the Bravo One handle and they call it the Modern Mountain Man. So the blade is just a smidge over five inches. It's five point, uh, well, according to the specs here, 5.187 inches, overall length of 10 inches, blade thickness of 0.93 of an inch, uh, handle thickness is 0.87 of an inch. Uh, it's made out of Magna Cut, and this is the first production run um, of this knife. So if I can get this to show up here clearly. It's got a little bit of oil on it from shipping. Magna Cut, super thin, super thin, super slicey. Yeah, it's got the uh, Bravo handle, which is, you know, it's a pretty, pretty sizable handle. Uh, probably one of the most comfortable handles you can get on any knife. Um, anybody that knows anything about Bark River knows that their handles are the best in the business as far as comfort and ergonomics. This particular one is green canvas micarta, red liners has mosaic pins. The sheath is nice thick leather pouch style sheath, multiple carry options, you know, low riding, high riding. You can strap it horizontally like that as well on your belt if you wanted to. I wouldn't want to personally, um, but yeah, some might. I think it would be too big to do that. Uh, yeah, that's just a overall really, really good uh, slicing knife. It's a take on a Green River style knife. So, like a butcher's knife, really good for skinning and processing meat and vegetables. You can see the grinds on this thing are spot on. Everybody complains and whines about little minor issues. Oh, this wedge just got a little bit, a little bit of a hump there, and maybe a little less on that one, but I mean, to, to, like a, just a fraction of a second longer on the buffer and you'll you'll end up losing that line there so you know these are these are pretty darn good I've got a lot of bark rivers and I've only had two that have wonky grinds on the plunge lines you see on this it's uh, perfect This one I got from DLT Trading. I pretty much only get my Bark River knives from either DLT Trading or Knives Ship Free. Those two companies are absolutely top notch, fantastic to deal with, and they do ship worldwide. They're in the States, I'm in Canada, and uh, yeah, couldn't be better uh, to deal with. Couldn't be happier with their customer service. Really good group of guys, and yeah, highly recommend looking at those two companies for any of your Bark River knife purchases. Yeah, so going back to uh, the Green River knife, as far as I know, uh, John Russell uh, from Russell Knives began making cutlery in or, you know, early to mid 1800s in an area called Green River in uh, the States there. And they were, you know, top quality knives. They rivaled the uh, the quality of the knives from Sheffield, England. And, you know, people when they moved west would take their knives out there with them. And, you know, they ended up uh, getting a really uh, big following as far as being, you know, extremely high quality, uh, dependable and functional knives. And, and this knife is, uh, you know, it's a take on, you know, some of those earlier knives. This is more similar to, I think, uh, Green River Skinner. It's not quite upswept like some of the Skinner knives I've seen, but it's it's kind of a, a blend maybe between a Skinner and a Butcher. I think they called, I think if I, I'm trying to remember what I've read about them, and I think they called this like a cook style Butcher pattern. They had a number of different patterns that were similar. Uh, the Skinner, the, yeah, like the Skinner was much more of an upswept knife, basically. Same blade pattern, just, you know, upswept more so it had more of a you know a continuous arc for for skinning um they had you know hunter's patterns and 
Cook's patterns and like the Hunter pattern had a clip point and you know, all, all around same kind of handle design, same general size, just different blade shapes and whatnot. And one of the, you know, the other big things about this knife is the steel. Magna Cut is, uh, you know, very wear resistant, uh, extremely tough steel that basically is very much, uh, you know, the same toughness and edge holding uh, capabilities as a CPM 4V steel, but it's much more stainless. It's not technically a stainless steel, it's still a tool steel, but with the, you know, the, the composition being what it is with, you know, different uh, alloying constituents in it, uh, the developer, Laren Thomas, has basically made the steel uh, stainless just because of the, the way the chromium uh, is used up, uh, I believe, in the formation of carbides and what's left over um, in solution to, to, to create maybe chrome oxides. I'm not... Uh, not knowledgeable on that, but uh, from my understanding, it's just the balancing act of the ingredients. There's nothing, you know, special about the ingredients themselves or the quantities by themselves, but it's the uh, the combining of them and uh, the quantities of each particular one within that combination that uh, gives rise to its uh, stainless qualities. But this, you know, knife being super thin, it's under 100 thou thick, it's going to be extremely uh, easy to sharpen. You're not gonna have to, you know, hardly do anything to get that edge to come back up because you're not gonna, you know, have to remove much steel uh, to do that. Any of my knives that I have that are super thin like that, I, I really enjoy because they just, you know, literally jump back to life uh, on the strop. Whereas, you know, something with thicker blade stock, it takes a, a fair bit more time and effort to, uh, you know, get an edge that's been dulled from use back to its hair popping sharpness. So. That's a, you know, a major benefit. So many knives these days are, are too thick. Um, they don't cut well. Um, and, and more importantly, they don't uh, uh, sharpen easily. Regardless of the steel's wear resistance, the, the thicker the steel, the, uh, the more steel you're gonna have to remove right on that cutting edge to uh, you know, form the apex. Even though these steel, uh, knives are convex ground, there is, there is a transition, right, from, from you know the convex up here to the convexity down here it becomes more acute right so there is a small small transition on that uh, convex geometry that uh, becomes steeper as it gets close to the uh, cutting edge right so thinner blade stock is gonna mean that 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 section right close to the cutting edge is actually thinner right so you're not gonna have to remove nearly as much steel you know it's gonna be like instead of being like that thick right, it's gonna be like that thick. So you're only removing a little tiny section of steel when you're stropping it, you know, or, you know, if you have to sharpen it on a stone or anything like that, um, the amount of material you have to move is far less. So that's huge. And then, you know, being as tough as Magna Cut is, I mean, you've got the ability to do, you know, work that uh, you couldn't otherwise do. The Green River knives were typically like a 1095 carbon steel which is you know it's a good steel there's nothing wrong with it it's easy to sharpen but it uh it pales in comparison for you know toughness uh to magna cut yeah, so the, like the toughness of magna cut uh, i'm just going off the top of my head um as far as the uh toughness and wear resistant charts i think magna cut was somewhere around 18 foot pounds uh for toughness on the uh as it called the charpy test and then uh, 1095, I think might have been around eight or nine foot pounds. So that's a significant difference uh, between those two steels. Obviously, Magna Cut's gonna, you know, take a lot more to sharpen, uh, but it's also gonna hold its edge way longer. And more importantly, you're you're far less likely to have, you know, catastrophic edge damage that's gonna require, you know, significant uh, removal of the steel to restore your edge, right? So. Everything's a, a balancing act. Magna Cut's got uh, you know everything pretty pretty well balanced as far as its you know positive attributes uh, uh, weighed against some of you know what might be considered negative attributes like uh, ease of sharpening. It's not obviously as easy as you know simple carbon steel, but uh, you get you get the benefits of added wear resistance, you know increased toughness, stain resistance. Um, 
yeah, that's just, it's overall, it's been an extremely impressive steel. I've been really, really happy with it. I don't have as much experience with it as I do, you know, other steels like crew wear and even 4V, but so far, I mean, it's, uh, to me, very, very much uh, indistinguishable from 4V as far as its edge quality and ease of sharpness and just, you know, edge holding. It's just fantastic. And I, I love 4V and I love crew wear. I, I mean, I can't really tell much of a difference between crew wear and 4V either. They're, they're very similar um, in, in use. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, one of the key things about those two other steels for me is it's a really, really fine grain structured steel. So it takes like an incredibly uh, acute edge, like just hair popping sharp. And it's for me, really easy to bring back to, you know, that kind of sharpness more so than even 3V, even though it's got more wear resistance. It just, uh, I, I don't know. I seem to have an easier time with getting it to the level of sharpness that I like. So yeah, no, I, uh, I, I really like MagnaCut and I've, uh, you know, I've worked uh, like my bushcraft scout pretty hard like I've I've done stuff with it that I wouldn't do with a thin blade like this right so it's uh, so far extremely impressive and I think you know anybody looking for a knife like this for you know doing food prep uh, you know game processing skinning I mean it will work as a fantastic knife for skinning it's not uh, it's not as good as a dedicated skinner but I mean it's super thin it's got lots of belly up front um, and it will work. So it's uh, overall, I think it's a, a very, very handy knife. Uh, I see myself actually using it in the kitchen a lot. It reminds me, you know, a lot of my Kephart uh, five inch, you know, which is same kind of blade, uh, like stock thickness, same basic overall length, just a slightly different blade profile, but you know, uh, pretty much the same. So it's, uh, yeah and that's another fantastic knife and that's in 4v so i mean it's um different handle wise but uh, yeah I, I see this kind of fulfilling the same uh tasks as that knife does and, and that knife uh, i've used in the kitchen a lot i've been a lot but basically it's just food prep and, and stuff like that that i i tend to use it for i got a lot of other knives that are maybe better suited for heavy work but um I wouldn't hesitate to use either of those and and this as well like this is just yeah it's it's, it's a nice nice knife the handle is really good i think it's nicer than the uh cap art in a lot of ways the cap art is a neutral handle being a broomstick handle but um yeah these bravo handles you can't beat so yeah if, uh, yeah if you like the video i certainly appreciate the thumbs up um you know if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and if you're looking for one of these uh, check out uh, dlt trading they, they do have some of these left in stock, including this handle uh, variation. I don't know if Dive Ship Free brought any of these in. I think they might've been exclusive to DLT trading, but yeah, yeah, definitely check them out. I would highly recommend getting one of these if you're at all interested. I think it's a fantastic knife. It's a phenomenal uh, iteration of a, you know, a very classic knife that's you know proved itself uh, decade after decade. Um, by people that, uh, you know, didn't just collect knives. They, uh, you know, use the hell out of them. So, yeah. Anyways, well, thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy the video.